Here's Dr. Matthews, Mrs. Piggott. Ah, uh, Dr. Matthews, I'm very concerned about Seamus's skin. It's gone completely flaky. I've never had this problem with any of my other children. Well, let's take a look at him. Uh, where is he? I'm sorry, he's so sensitive. He thinks people will make fun of him because of his flaky skin. Come on, Seamus, let the doctor look at you. Ah! Seamus, you're a snake. <laughs> It's only for a night or two, so we can take a proper look at you. You will make me better. Otherwise, no one will like me with my skin falling to bits. Now, don't be silly, Seamus. Sometimes we look better than at other times, but always remember, we look just the same underneath. He was adopted. I thought you might have realized that, Dr. Matthews. After all, he's a snake and his mother is a horse. <sighs> We're still going out to the cinema tomorrow night, the 25th. You haven't forgotten. Of course I haven't forgotten. I've been looking forward to it all week. I know I won't sleep a wink tonight. Oh. Too. Why? I'm a Dalmatian, and I haven't got any spots. But you know what Nurse Kitty says? We're all just the same underneath. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Ted. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Ted. Oi, Kitty. Yes, Ted. Uh, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but did you know you've got a great big spot right in the middle of your face? I get it seen to. Sticks out a mile. Thank you, Ted. Yes, I did know. But I'm just the same underneath. Oh, Kitty, you're a bit late. Had a spot of bother? Just a spot, Dr. Matthews. I've been wondering about Seamus. And I think he may have psoriasis. What he needs is some coal tar ointment. I'll go and get some from Claire and Arthur. I need to see them about another problem anyway. My goodness, Kitty. Aren't you hot wearing a scarf on a hot day like today? Oh, no. I'm, I'm going out tonight. I don't want to catch cold. Better do it. Hello, Claire. Arthur. I've just come to collect some coal tar ointment. Righto. Oh, and I was just wondering if you had any spot cream. Spot cream? You're in luck, Kitty. We've just invented some. Help yourself. Oh, no! I've grown another spot! It works! What do you mean, it works? I wanted to get rid of my spot, and now I've got two. Exactly. That's why it's called Spot Queen. It's for Dodie. He's a Dalmatian, and he hasn't got any spots. Yes, and it's very kind of you to try it out for us, Kitty. Oh! <laughs> Did you see that, Ted? She's got another spot now. What a whopper! Can <laughs> see it for miles. <laughs> oh! There. That should do the trick. I hope so. I don't want anyone to make fun of me. See, Seamus? Remember what Nurse Kitty told you? You're just the same underneath. Isn't that right, Kitty? Um, yes, Dr. Matthews. But everyone will run away from me so they don't catch it too. Catch it? Don't be silly, Seamus. You can't catch it. 
Why is Nurse Kitty wearing a mask, then? That's true. Why are you wearing a mask, Kitty? Oh... Hello, Dodie. Time to try our new spot cream. Just rub it in and it'll give you spots. It's been scientifically tested. There we are. I can see a spot coming now. Let me have a look. Let me look. There. Oh. What's the matter? It's the wrong colour. Dalmatians always have black spots. People will laugh at me if I don't have black spots. Oh. I'm worried about Seamus, Dr. Atticus. His skin is flaking off. Well, of course. You do know that snakes shed... My goodness, Kitty. Those spots are enormous. Really quite unusually huge. Yes, Dr. Atticus. But I'm just the same underneath. Ah, oh, Kitty. I've just been looking at Seamus' skin. I'm just wondering if we should try the spa pool. Yes, Dr. Matthews. I'll be there now. Oh! What's got into her? Uh, Dr. Matthews, you do know that snakes... Huh? Talk to yourself. There we go. That should make your skin feel softer. I hope so. My skin's getting worse and worse. I must be the ugliest animal in the world. Nonsense. A little bit of rough skin is nothing to worry about. Could be a lot worse. Look at Kitty with those two great big spots on her face. Oh! Any improvement, Kitty? No, Dr. Matthews. No improvement at all. I can't help feeling that Kitty's taking Seamus's problem a bit personally. Well, Matthews, what is it? I wanted your opinion about Seamus. His skin just gets flakier and flakier. Ah, yes. Well, that's because he's a snake, and snakes shed their... Ah, there you are, Kitty. And where's Seamus? I wanted Dr. Atticus to take a look at him. I can't find Seamus anywhere, Dr. Matthews. But I did find this. Yes. As I've been trying to tell you, Dr. Matthews... Come on, Kitty. Let's get to the bottom of this. There you are, Seamus. Look at me! Look at me! I'm so grateful, Dr. Matthews. Seamus' skin looks better than it ever did. What did you do? We didn't do anything. No. As they grow, snakes shed their skin. It's a natural process. You were right, Kitty. All the time I really was just the same underneath. So you don't have to worry either, Dr. Atticus. Me? Well, even with that spot, you're just the same underneath. Spot? What spot? Must be all those chocolate biscuits. Oh, dear. Are you going? What about your spots? Oh, I've decided to stay as I am. It doesn't really matter what you look like. Oh, uh, I know. We're, We're just, just the, the same, same underneath. underneath. Goodbye, Ted. Ready to go, Kitty. The film starts in half an hour. I... I don't think I'll be able to go after all, Dr. Matthews. Oh, Kitty, I really want to see this film. It's got Leoline Leopard in it. Those spots of hers drive me wild. Really, Dr. Matthews? Can't resist spots. Ever since I went out with a Dalmatian once. Why, Kitty, your skin looks wonderful in the moonlight. Does it, Dr. Matthews? Really? Heavenly. Now, come on, Kitty, or we'll be late. Coming, Dr. Matthews. Many happy returns, Dr. Atticus. It's my birthday. Good heavens, I completely forgot. We weren't quite sure how many candles we should put on the um, cake. Yes, um... Uh... <clears throat> Sorry to spoil the party, what? but Virtue's oh, just been rushed into emergency. Oh. Sally, Kitty, could you come right come away? Come now, Dr. Matthews. <gasps> <laughs> No sign of a head injury. Mm. Um. Blood pressure's low. Doesn't look good. Yes, the poor thing. Mm. <gasps> oh, my poor virtue. 
you. Take the sample to the lab, please, Kitty. Oh. Oh. Would you like a piece of my birthday cake? No, thanks. Just had breakfast. You must be getting on a bit now, Dr. Atticus. Uh, yes, I, I think I'm rather more than one year old. Would you mind if we asked you a few questions about how Virtue got into this condition, Mrs... Uh, Mrs... It's... Uh, oh, no, I should know that one. <laughs> I'm sure I've got it here somewhere. Mm. Uh, oh, yes. Here we are. Mrs. Olive Atkins. Do you have any idea why Virtue collapsed? Um, oh, now that's a hard one. I should know this, but... Uh, Has he eaten anything unusual or taken any medicine? Oh, that's a puzzler, that is. You see, if you could remember, it would help us to find out what's wrong with Virtue. And then we could help him get better. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember anything. <laughs> How is he? He's really not very well. If only we knew how this happened, but Olive can't remember anything. It's hard to remember things when you're very worried. I'll see if I can get her to relax. That might help her remember. Good idea. I'll bring her a cup of tea. Relaxing with Benny B? Um, Piano Meditations by Richard Cuttlefish. No. Aha! Perfect. Dreamy sounds of dolphins. Right, Olive. I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your trunk. <laughs> Sorry. What did you say? Oh, dear. We've run out of tea bags. Have you got the key to the cupboard, Sally? No. I think Dr. Atticus had it last. Oh, dear. Better get a new one cut, then. In. <laughs> and out. Oh, oh I'm drowning. <laughs> oh. Have you seen yep, a key yep. to the store cupboard, Dr. Atticus? Mm. Oh. Mm. Don't know what that's doing there. The key, Dr. Atticus? Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, sorry. No, I haven't got it. I could have sworn you had it last. Not me, Kitty. <sighs> oh, but I was going to make Olive a nice cup of tea. Well, don't worry. I'll take her some cake instead. game called Bez. Now, uh, pick two cards. Oh. Oh. Now, memorize where the cards are. Do they? Oh, let's try something else. Any news? He's very ill. Sally thinks we might have to operate. Oh dear, I hope not. I don't think Dr. Atticus will be able to manage. Why ever not? I think he's losing his memory. He forgot about his own birthday, can't remember how old he is, and has lost the key to the store cupboard. I'll ask Claire and Arthur. They might have something to help him remember things. Oh, Dr. Matthews, you're so decisive. I like that in a dog. There is no miracle drug for memory loss, but we do have a book somewhere about memory techniques. You had that book last, didn't you, Claire? No, you had it last. Did I? Well, where is it then? Are you sure you didn't have it? Peanut butter on cake, Dr. Atticus. Yes. Olive must be really hungry by now. Oh, no. His heartbeats are very irregular. Get Dr. Atticus. We're going to have to operate right now. You are now 
asleep. Tell me, Olive, what was Virtue doing this morning? I gave him something to eat. He was hungry. Oh, oh, where am I? Oh, Dr. Atticus, we just reached complete inner peace. I'm sorry. We ran out of tea, so I thought you might like some peanut butter cake. Oh, oh, that's it. What is it? Nuts. Don't be so rude. No, nuts. He's allergic to nuts, and I gave him peanut butter sandwiches this morning. Are you sure now? Yes, certain. Oh, my poor virtue. I'll never forgive myself. I'll tell everyone. <laughs> His blood count is out. Definitely an allergic reaction. We'd better tell Sally. Yes? Thank you, Claire. EpiPen kit. <laughs> right. Good. EpiPen kit. Do you think that'll work? Should do. Makes the heart beat really fast. It could wake a hibernating bear. Hmm. <sighs> I'll go and get Olive. She'll be so relieved. Oh, I just felt Virtue's trunk move. Virtue! Virtue! He's waking up. Oh, Virtue, I'm so glad you're all right. <laughs> ah, Grandma, you're squeezing my trunk. Oh, sorry, love. I must say, you're looking a lot better. This is a medic alert bracelet to say you are allergic to nuts. You must never take it off, OK? Yes. And you must always remind people never to give you anything with nuts in, especially your grandma. OK. Here's a notebook. I've written in the notebook what virtue can and can't eat, so you don't forget. Oh, thanks. You know, Dr. Atticus, maybe you should use a notebook, too. You did forget your birthday. Kitty, when you're as old as I am, you try to forget your birthday. Oh, I am sorry, Dr. Atticus. Oh, that's quite all right. Actually, a notebook might come in handy. I have one in my pocket. Here you are. Oh. Oh, dear. The key to the store cupboard. I had it all the time. On second thoughts, Kitty, Maybe you should keep that notebook. I think you need it more than me. <laughs> What's wrong with your driving, Ted? There's nothing wrong with my driving. It's the echo in the back. It's too blooming heavy. Right, Ted. Get it out. Good job she's on again, eh, Ted. We'd never lift her. Grab it, Ted. Can't it's too heavy. Watch out. Who's it? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Welcome to Hilltop Hospital, Mrs. Hippopotamus. to do with our fabulous new cake making machine is one put in the ingredients two pull the handle and three bob your uncle Eat it now. Mm, not fair. You'll just have to wait. That cake's for your birthday. Mm. Ah. Oh. Oh. My Lucy, you are a big girl. Your mother says you've been feeling tired and out of breath. Do you eat a lot, Lucy? She eats the same as everyone else. And you never eat between meals. Do you, Lucy? Mm, no. Well, you're very heavy for your age and height, Lucy. 
It's not good for your heart. Let's take a blood test. Ooh, what's that pink elephant on the ceiling? Oh! Looks quite normal, doesn't it? We couldn't find anything unusual. But there must be something wrong. Snap. You looked. I didn't. See the cake? Yum, yum. Did you see what I saw, Ted? Three bunnies acting funny. Back to bed with you. Go to sleep. He's late. Right, okay. Off to sleep then, everyone. Night. <gasps> the birthday cake's gone. Someone stole it in the night. Well, I hope you aren't accusing me. It wasn't me. And it wasn't me. Dr Atticus, have you taken a birthday cake from the lab? Uh, oh, uh, 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 birthday cake? Oh, I'd love some. Oh. Claire and Arthur will just have to make another one. And we'll lock it in the cupboard where it's safe. We'll put the rest of the food for the party in the staff room fridge. Hello, Lucy. How are you? All right. Today we're going to try a new therapy. <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? Not really. Don't be rude, Lucy. We're going to wrap you in bandages. In a lovely mud bar. I hate mud. It stinks. Lucy! <laughs> I will be able to get to my lettuce, will I? I do sometimes need a snack while I'm working. We'll put your lettuce right here, Dr. Atticus. Right at the front. How's that? Lovely. Lucy, there's no need to be frightened, Lucy. We'll try a different therapy. Snap! You looked! Don't start that again. Where are you going? I'm going for a wee. I need a tinkle too. I'm bursting. Don't be long then. <laughs> I just fancy a lettuce sandwich. Oh dear. What is it, Dr. Atticus? Someone's stolen all the biscuits and chocolate for the party. That's terrible. What about the birthday party tomorrow? Oh. We'll buy some more crisps and chocolate bars, but not until tomorrow. That'll to put a stop to this. Will you take Lucy for a bath, please, Tess? She's been sweating a lot in the night. Can do. It's what we're here for. I'll change the sheets. They may be a bit damp. No! No! You'll feel a lot fresher with clean sheets, Lucy. Oh. Oh, but I was hungry. I, I thought it was all right to take things from the fridge. Well, it wasn't. Besides, you know too much chocolate isn't good for you, don't you, Lucy? 
Are you unhappy about something? Is that what's making you want to eat all the time? Nobody wants to play with me. They all ran away when I arrived and called me Jelly Belly. Sorry, we didn't mean it. I'd like to play with you. Me too. I don't believe you. Hands up, everyone that wants to play with Lucy. This vegetable pie is delicious. Yes, we made it especially for Lucy. It's got lots of vitamins, but it's not fattening. Very scientific. Perhaps you could give me the recipe. I could make it at home. Ah! Ah! Who'd like some birthday cake? Me, not me first. What about you, Lucy? Um, uh, um... It's all right, Lucy. You can eat sweet things, as long as you don't have too much. Um, well, maybe a small piece. Goodbye, Lucy. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Just keep to the diet and come back and see me in a week. Then you get then. If you don't mind, we'd rather walk home, wouldn't we, Mum? I, uh, no. We don't mind at all. I think you're putting on a bit of weight, Teds. You should do a bit of exercise. Don't be cheeky. Yes, don't be cheeky. Fancy a game of football. Oh. It's not our job, this. Why are we fixing the pipe? We're not eating engineers. No, we're ambulance men. It's not our job to fix the central eating. Well done, Ted. Got a good volunteer. Yeah? What did she say? Didn't hear a word. You see, I don't just think of you as a surgeon. I think of you as a very warm and lovely hippo. Uh, what was that? Dr Matthews? Can't hear a thing. I just thought it'd be a great idea if, if one night we went out to the cinema. I'm sorry, Dr Matthews, I didn't catch any of that. That's better. Now, what were you saying, Dr Matthews? I'm all ears. Well, I... Surgeon Sally, Dr Matthews, new patient for you. Eustacia, a little mouse. I'm on my way. <clears throat> oh. Dr Matthews, the new patient? You know, sometimes, Kitty, she doesn't listen to a word I say. Aren't you going to examine her? Examine her? Kitty, I can't even get her to go out to the cinema. What is that racket? Can't anyone get any sleep? No, Eustacia. Do you have any pain? No. I live at 3 Green Hill Lane. Eh? Now, Eustacia, when did all this start? With my granny. Oh, Matthews, I'm not getting anywhere with you, Stacia, here. Won't answer any of my questions. No? Well, let's have a look, then. This won't hurt you, Stacia. She looks after me. Hmm. It looks like you've had an infection which has given you glue ears. Jam sandwiches. We'd better keep you in tonight, you, Stacia, and keep an eye on you. I'll be six next birthday. Hmm. Not cooking? Yes. We've done enough for today. No, I'm not leaving this one. Got to leave the pump going, Dr Atticus. Or it might flood. See? But how's anyone going to get any sleep? There. Now you have a good night's sleep, Eustacia. Good night. Under my pillow. Hmm. It's all right for some. How are we meant to sleep with all this noise? It's like living in a drain pipe. Down a bit. Now left. <laughs> Eustacia has sticky fluid here, between the eardrum and the inner ear. You know, Sally, if you don't like the cinema, perhaps we could go to the opera. 
Operate? Yes, I think you're right, Dr. Matthews. And as soon as possible. That's it. Not again. I've slept a wink. No. We won't get any sleep. Not with this racket. Good morning. Can I help, Ted? Help? If you want to help, you can pass me an hammer. Right, Ted. Turn off the pump. What do you mean? I already turned it off. Can't you turn that radio off? It's driving us batty. You stay shut, you must turn it down a little. Thanks. You look nice too, Nurse Kitty. Don't do that. I can't hear it if you turn it down. I know you, Stacia. You have a problem with your ears. We need to operate. Operate? But I don't want an operation. I'm not going to have one. Don't worry, you, Stacia. It won't hurt. And afterwards, you'll be able to hear perfectly. No, I don't need a bedpan. <laughs> Ambulance men. And we thought that what with you being so scientific, I might find a way to stop the radiators rattling. No problem. Dr. Matthews, Dr. Matthews, <clears throat> Eustacia won't have her operation. She absolutely refuses. Yes, she does. Sally refuses everything I suggest. I was talking about Eustacia. Honestly, Kitty, sometimes I think you don't listen to a word I say. Oh. Well, here we are, Ted's. We've invented something that will solve the problem. Yes, can't fail. It's scientific. Hey. We've invented these. We call them earplugs. You put them in your ears, like so, and you can't hear the radiator. Well, that's no good. That's not going to fix the radiator, is it? Anything the matter? Nobody appreciates science. No, our brilliant ideas are all wasted. I know what you mean. We need to put a grommet in Eustacia's ear, but she won't have the operation. Grommet? Yes, it's a little plastic tube. It drains off any sticky fluid in the ears. That's it! it. Thanks, Kitty. I don't know. Bayek. We've got a new invention. This one will definitely work. It's completely scientific. What is it? It's a grommet. There's too much water running through the pipes, so we put this in to take away the extra water. What is it? A grommet. A bit like the one they want to put in your ear, only bigger. That's it. That's done the trick, Ted. Ah, that's better. Peace at last. Wow, I want to grom it too. I want to grom it. And you shall have one. Let's go and tell Kitty. No, I usually wear wellies. Right, everybody, let's get down to business. Where's Dr Atticus? <laughs> Uh, coming. Do you think Sally would like to go to a football match? Come on, Dr. Matthews. We need to get on with it. No, kickoff isn't until 3 p.m. I'm talking about Eustacia's operation. You don't listen to a word I say. Right. Scissors. 
scissors, Sally. I said scissors. Anesthetic ready. Anesthetic! Why isn't the anesthetic ready? Oh, I'm about to perform a delicate piece of surgery. Why isn't anyone listening? How do you feel now, Eustacia? Oh, much better, thank you, Dr. Matthews. I just wish it wasn't so noisy in the ward. Oh, well, excuse me. <coughs> Feeling a bit peckish. Well, perhaps that's sorted out then. Anything else? There is one other matter, Sally. If I could just have a private word. Well, Matthews, what is it? I was just wondering, Sally, if you'd like to come with me to a football match this afternoon. Eh? What was that, Matthews? He says, do you want to go to a football match this afternoon? Mm, get your ears syringed. What? What was that, Matthews? He says you should get your ears syringed. <laughs> One stocking for me, and one for you, Dr. Matthews. We dogs don't usually wear stockings, Kenny. <laughs> They're not for wearing, Dr. Matthews. They're for when Santa comes tonight. He'll put our presents in them. Yours in one, mine in the other. Well, as long as it's big enough for a bone. It's going to be a lovely Christmas. <sighs> Look. I think it might snow. Wouldn't it be great to have a white Christmas? Peter! Peter! Where are you? Your supper's getting cold. So much time doing your Christmas shopping in an helicopter. Yeah, I don't know why everyone else doesn't do it. Hey, wait a minute. Look down there. Looks like a bear. A white bear. White bear? Bears aren't white. Bears is brown. Not if they're from the North Pole or not. North Pole? What's she doing here then? What are you doing here? You should be on the North Pole. I floated away when the ice broke, and then I lost my wellies in the water, and now I can't move my toes. Can't move your toes? Why? What's the matter with them? Crikey! We better get you to hospital as soon as possible. What's this? An early Christmas present? Yes, it's from us. To us. It's a new computer, so we can use the internet. The internet tells you everything a scientist needs to know. We need it urgently. There's an emergency. Emergency? Yes, we've got to find a recipe for Christmas cake. Ah, there you are, Dr. Matthews. There's an emergency. We've got a very cold bear to warm up. Action stations. Mallet. Mallet. Chisel. Chisel. Anesthetic, Sandy. No need, Dr. Atkins. Peter's toes are so frozen he can't feel anything. There. Now. Let's have a look at those toes. Mm. Just as I thought. Severe frostbite. Kitty, get these feet into warm water. Dr. Atkins, we'll need some warm socks. Uh, oh, I'll see what I can do. Dr. Matthews, fetch the child a warm drink. Yes, Sally. Will I be well enough to go home for Christmas? I'm afraid not, Peter. I've got a very nasty case of frostbite. But I want to be with my mummy. And what about my presents? Ah, oh. <laughs> uh -huh. just the job. Perfect recipe for cocoa, and it's all on the internet. Is that drink ready for Peter? Yes, look, it's called cocoa. We've found the recipe on the computer. Yes, the computer tells us everything. I wish it could tell us how to cheer up Peter. 
He's going to spend Christmas in the hospital without his family and without his presents. Oh. Well done, Dr. Atticus. They'll keep Peter's toes warm as toast. Where on earth did you find them? Oh, they were just hanging around. Well, they're just the job. Feeling better, Peter? Yes, but I want to go home. Everyone should spend Christmas with their families. Or with the one they love. Oh, yes. Yes, I always spend Christmas with my brother. And I spend Christmas with my brother, too. Well, if Peter has to stay in hospital, then why don't we bring his mother here? I could fetch her in the helicopter. And I could fetch her in my helicopter. We just need to know where she lives. Now, where did those stockings go? On an ice floor? On a thin piece of ice floating in the sea? That's no use. We won't be able to land our helicopter. I'm going to ask Claire and Arthur. Their computer can tell them everything. Currents and reasons. Claire, Arthur, stop that. But we're making Christmas cake. This is more important. We need to bring Peter's mother here for Christmas. And the Tets say they can't land the helicopter. Don't worry, we'll find the answer. On the computer. I've come to change the warm patches on your toes, Peter. Mm, they're still a little bit frozen. My stockings. What do you mean, your stockings? These stockings are for Santa to put our presents in. We must think of the patient first, Kitty. But, but... Yes, you're right, Sally. We must think of the patients first. Even if it means we don't get Christmas presents this year. By using low frequency induction measurements coupled with a precise laser altimeter, we should be able to tell where it's safe to land. Let's find the tip. There. Let's tuck you in. You must have an early night because tomorrow is Christmas. It won't be Christmas for me if I'm not at home. Now, now, Peter. Let the hospital be your home. But it's not my home. Home is my mum, my presence and the snow. Home is a long, long way away. It shouldn't be far now. Whoa! There it is. Yes, but is it safe to land? It's not going to feel like Christmas with no stockings full of presents. <coughs> uh, well, at least we can have a piece of Christmas cake. Bad news. Two lots of bad news. The Teds haven't been able to land. Our invention didn't work. Oh, Peter will be so disappointed. What's the other bit of bad news? The other bit of bad news is that we wasted so much time on that stupid computer that we'd no time left to make the Christmas cake this year. What? Well, we thought the patient must come first. But, but, uh, uh, oh, yes, you're right, Claire. The patient must come first. Oh. everyone and oh. happy Christmas oh, oh yes uh, um. oh kitty this is the best Christmas ever my mummy came all the way from the North Pole and brought all my presents with her but I thought you couldn't land Claire and Arthur said their invention didn't work no it didn't useless we chucked it in the sea had to lift them up on a rope so now hospital is just like home. I have my mummy and my presents and the snow. So it's a white Christmas after all. Special late post for the livery last night. It's addressed to all the staff. Well, let's open it. After all, it is Christmas. Santa did come after all. 